Blog Talk Radio. Enter the zone. The Prophecy Zone. Your end time watchman. Bringing you light in a dark world. Where truth is rivaled with a lie. And the matrix is normal life. Luke 21. And there shall be signs in the sun, and in the moon, and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear, and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken, and then shall they see the Son of Man coming in a cloud, with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass, then look up and lift up your heads, for your redemption draweth nigh. You are now in the zone. So be ready to enter the light or truth about the end of days, so you will be ready for the coming of the Lord. You are in the zone, the prophecy zone. So join us for the next hour as we look at world events in line with Bible prophecy, so you'll be informed and be ready for the coming of Jesus Christ. Hey, how you doing? Welcome to the Prophecy Zone. This is Phil Armstrong, and I'm going to be with y'all for a few minutes just to talk about Bible prophecy. I hope y'all having a wonderful, blessed evening in the Lord. Um, and I have this hot, hot day across the United States. Um, hopefully y'all can now get some shade since it's nighttime. Uh, grab a drink and, and enjoy the show. Um, theory of fighting spills into Lebanon, five killed. And this happened in, um, over the weekend. Um, it seems like the uh, a violence in Syria is moving over across their border into the other other countries, while Iran is um, shooting up missiles, trying to display their strength to the uh, rest of the world, especially NATO. Um, Iran stressed preparedness to repel enemy attacks. And they have massive war games going on with the Islamic Revolutionary Guard. Um, the world receives this message from the IRGC war games in the Persian Gulf. The Islamic Republic of Iran is always ready to defend the revolution and fully prepare to confront enemies time uh, and time again. Uh, uh, it seems like they want their Masi to appear, and boy, is he going to appear. They they don't know who they're messing with, the Iranian um, leadership says. Uh, But what I want to talk to you all today about is a Mediterranean Union, and I am going to change the... uh, um, focus on the show today, but I, I still want to go back to Syria because that, that's next on the in line. Um, the focus point it seems like the, the meeting line for World War III is um, Syria. It's like the beginning spot where everybody's meeting to duke it out. Uh, I don't think that's going to be the case. Uh, I think what's going to happen is um, it's going to appear that uh, we, we're going to after Iran, or the United States uh, is going after Iran with Israel. But um, I don't think they're going to make it that far. I don't think they're going to make it that to that point because Russia in Ezekiel thirty eight thirty nine is coming down, but Iran is with them. So if Iran is fully intact, that means there's no way anybody attacked Iran. Well, at least, at least to the point of uh, Iraq type war, um, and uh, it looks to me as if uh, Iran is going to be safe for the time being, at least as far as a massive coalition coming against Iran. I think the massive coalition will end up coming against Israel, and Russia will beat uh, the West to the point. It'll beat them to the punch. (sighs) 
the Mediterranean Union uh, is what I call the real, true Roman Empire. It encompasses all the trajectory of the all the ge- geographical territory of the old Roman Empire. And when you read Daniel chapter 2, Daniel chapter 7, and Revelation chapter 13, all these beasts consist of Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, and the old Roman Empire. What I don't understand is, is a lot of Bible teachers, they're excluding Africa, Northern Africa, and Europe. So what I want to do real quickly is to give a synopsis of what could be the case of the revived Roman Empire coming out of the sea. The ten horns could be ten regions. Um, poor regions, rather. <clears throat> the Middle East is mixed up, uh, mix, made up of 47 nations, uh, and I think the European Union is made up maybe 27. Um, I'm going to try to look that up as I as I continue to talk. Hopefully I can um, chew down and walk at the same time. Um the number of nations, I guess I could say the number of nations and the EU. Uh, So I'm thinking 27, number of nations. I'm dialing with my left hand. So let me see what they come up with. So I can't see the number right now. But I know that the... um, Countries in in Europe. Let's see. Let's see at least at least the list of countries in Europe. So it looks like. So I don't see on this list right here. I don't know if they're counting uh, the Eastern Bloc. They even got Vatican City on here. So I don't think that's a proper list. But I'm thinking it's 27. It could be more. It could be way under. I feel like I'm on a Price is Right when they say you, you're you're. Uh, Price and items, and you're trying to win the showcase, showdown, and you either go over, a little like a, you don't know what you're doing, or go well under. At least you're safe when price is right. But I'm thinking 27 countries. So, and then I, I, I don't know how many in Africa. But um, what it is is that it it can't. But the end time beast has to uh, cover the entire area of the old Roman Empire. And that happens to be uh, a empire that's made up of, in Daniel chapter 2, two legs. And one of the legs was uh, controlled by... Uh, the uh, Romans, and the other one was controlled by Constantinople. They decided to break it up into two. Rome was the west, and Constantinople ran the east. And um, without a proper two-leg organization, you would not get to two feet. And the two feet is different because it's divided up into ten. And then when you go to Daniel chapter 2 and Daniel chapter 7, it's divided up into what? Ten horns. So if you count the old territory and you, you're honest with your, with your, with your, with your uh, analyst, analytical observation, you're going to next say, okay, there were two territories. There was the east and there was the west. And it was now divided up into ten toes. So after the two legs, it became the two toes. 
on the ten toes. So why you ask yourself a question, why is it divided up into ten toes now? Is God trying to tell us something? It's not ten countries, folks. It can't be. How do you know that? I, I, it can If you usually sit down and use common sense, you, you're not going to come up with the, 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 the same territory. If you read Daniel chapter two, the same territory. Uh, quit watching them Left Behind movies. I mean, I like Left Behind, but quit watching them and thinking that they're, the, they're the gospel. They're not. It's just a movie. You have to have Babylon in the in the in the rise of the beast. It's in general rise, his first rise, you're going to have to have Babylon. You have to have Media Persia. You're going to have to have Greece. You're going to have to have the, the revived Roman, the old Roman Empire. You're going to have to have the whole entire territory that encompasses the Middle East also and Africa and the Euro- European Union. Now, <clears throat> with that being said, Nikolai Sarkozy came up with a, uh, with a revived Roman Empire. And uh, this empire was created in the July of 2008. And uh, that was his baby at first. So what has become of the union? Well, we'll see in the next couple of months. Well, hopefully I won't see because hopefully I want to be gone. Yeah, I'm a rapture freak. I like, I love the rapture. It's a good thing. It's not a bad thing, folks. God can. What people are telling me when they don't believe in the rapture is that God can't. He can't resurrect. He can't lift anything that he made. The rock is too heavy for him to lift. And I don't think that's the case. At all. So Europe is coming up with a super president. So let me start over and let me explain it really careful so y'all can understand. The beast coming out of the sea, the end time beast, will be made up of ten. If you look at Daniel chapter two, you're going to have the beast, I mean the statue made up of Media Persia, um, Babylon, Media Persia, Greece, Rome, and the New Rome, the revived Roman Empire. The beast has to, I mean, the beast out of Daniel chapter 7 and the beast out of Revelation um, 13 all have the same empires in it. So God is trying to say something. He's trying to say that these beasts, have to make up the geo, geo the geographical land that, the, that God is trying to tell you. So Babylon has to be in it. When the beast rises out of the sea, in Daniel chapter seven, Babylon has to rise up too. When the beast in that Re- Revelation chapter thirteen, then the beast has to. Daniel, uh, when Daniel was talking about uh, Babylon, Babylon has to rise up too. So does Media Persia, so does Greece, so forth and so on. <laughs> Excuse me. So, in other words, a lot of people who are saying it's just Europe, it's not just Europe. It's a revived Roman Empire, the same empire it used to be. Now, I don't, re- I, I recall the Byzantine Empire lasting a lot longer than the Roman Empire myself. So when people give credos to the old Roman Empire before they divided it up, it doesn't make any sense because Daniel chapter two has Babylon in the old, in the statue. Uh, and it also has it in Daniel chapter 7 and in Revelation chapter 13. So it, 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 it has to encompass these empires. So the beast will encompass uh, ten, 10 horns, five out of Europe. I'm just guessing on this one. Five out of Europe, two out of Africa, northern Africa, and three. 
The reason why I got the number two for Northern Africa is it only makes sense for the beast, um, for the Antichrist to subdue three, which has to be the European Union. So could it be a caliphate? Could that be a, a, Byzantine, a Byzantine Empire, a caliphate uh, that this, they're spoken of, speaking about in their book, in their Koran? Could the Mahdi take over a empire, and could the globalists set them up for this to happen? Could the globalists understand that, hey, we're going to let this prophecy come true. We're going to see how many of them come to uh, the to come to the Mahdi, who is the Antichrist. The Europe is looking for a super president. I don't have no article on that, but <laughs> yeah, that's what they're looking for: super president, someone who got all the power, more power than any of their uh, counterparts. Right now, it's running the uh, Brussels uh, organization. They call right now the EU. Uh, what I think could happen uh, is that someone from the Middle East, possibly the leader of Syria, <laughs> brokers a peace agreement with Israel now. I believe he'll be assigned uh, the position because what they will probably do is they will probably take a leader out of the position. Maybe there's a rotation, just like they did in Europe, where the leader of Europe or the leader one of the countries in Europe, like Spain or Italy or something like that, they did a rotation. Well, these people, these guys might do a rotation, and it just so happened that the Antichrist is the first rotation. Folks, there are things going to start happening in the next couple of months uh, that uh, we're going to have to keep our eyes on Jesus. Jesus is coming back soon, and his reward is with him to take judgment upon those who are disobedient and to take those who are obedient to him. Jesus uh, provided a way on the cross for us 2,000 years ago. And we have to go by that cross. We have to go into heaven through Jesus. And that's the only way. There's no other way to the Father but by Jesus. So, yeah, we are heading very quickly into a confrontation with Syria. Um, this show that I'm doing right now, uh, we're doing pretty good, but we're not we're not where we want to be. Um, it's because I don't have enough time to do any shows. Um, so what I'm going to start doing is taping my shows. So this show right here is live, but uh, a lot of my other shows are going to be taped, so I apologize for that. So I just want you all to listen, though. Um, don't, the blog talk has a, a way of not listening to people because it's a recording. Sometimes the person's there, but <clears throat> they are um, away because a lot of times I'll, I'll turn on the show and then I'll see to my kids and I'll do the show late at night and that's what I'm going to start doing every day. But God bless everybody out there. Um, I, I, I see you see those, so. It's about to get really interesting. Um, and uh, what's going to be happening in the near future is going to rock our mind. Uh, Jesus is coming soon for his church. And we all need to be ready for that call. And if we're not ready... We need to get ready. Um, I believe that Jesus is going to come back for a church without spot of blemish. Uh, is he coming back for a perfect, perfect church? No, but I think he's coming back for somebody who's totally surrendered to Christ. And that's how you 
has no spot or blemish. You're totally surrendered to Christ. Uh, parts, parts of our flesh don't want to do the things that we need to do. But when we're totally surrendered, we we might uh, we might battle, we might fall, uh, but there comes a time when Jesus is there to pick us up, to give us strength. You're gonna hear you're gonna hear my uh, radio go blog talk radio. Yeah. <laughs> Told you. I just turned on the show. But um, God is good. And um, he is coming back for his church. And that's a great promise. I'm going to get some music on here. <laughs> I want some music really bad. I got I got my bro, um, brother uh, Dave's uh, music, but I haven't put it on yet. But I would like to. <laughs> uh, I got to remember what folder that is. I got to upload those as soon as I get a chance. Uh, as soon as I get a chance. But God is so good, man. I mean, I, I He has put He has God has supplied my all my all, every need. If we need to do that. I keep doing that right. Long talk radio. Um, but uh, this this show is sort of something that you know I, I sort of really prayed real quick and said God I'm gonna do a show, and uh, I seem kind of dry. But uh, I'm telling y'all folks, I, I'm 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 uh, ready to just go at it because what you do for Jesus is gonna last. What you do for yourself in this world is not gonna last. Um, We've been saying World War Three was going to start a while back. Um, you know, a lot of us were saying that, and um, it's just a matter of birth pain. Sometimes, you know, when my wife had a baby, you know, she had pain. You know, she had birth pains, and then we get in the car, and you know, they go away. She's like breathing, you know, breathing. You know how they sit and breathe real fast, and then she, you know, the you know the pains are back. And she breathes, you know, breathe, 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 breathe. And then they're gone, and then they come back, and so forth and so on. But when she gets to the hospital, she finally has the baby. Well, this is exactly what we're doing. This is what's exactly what's going on. I'm not a prophet, and a lot of people out there are claiming to be prophets, but a lot of us, a whole bunch of us, is not claiming to be prophets. We're just following the birth pain, unfortunately. We get false. Sometimes we get false alarms. Watchmen get false alarms. Is watchmen is watchmen a um, self appointed job, <laughs> or everybody should be watching? I think Jesus told everybody to watch and pray. I think everybody's a watchman, just like everybody's an evangelist. Now the evangelistical role belongs to whoever God appoints, but we are all supposed to preach the gospel. We are all supposed to be going out and letting our light shine and our thoughts. You look at light, you see a person's light, you see them from a distance, and then you taste salt when they get up close to you, and you hear how they talk, what comes out their mouth, how they walk, that's that's salt. And uh, Jesus wanted to be the salt of the, the, the light of the world, and he wants to be salty. 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 <laughs> he wants to be salty. Which is preservation of meat. They put the meat in you know, with the salt, and they come back, and it's just like see, they didn't have freezers back then, so they used salt to preserve meat. And uh, I guess it worked. And that's what we're supposed to be doing out there in the world. Um, but we're also supposed to be witnessing. That should be our duty. What did we do with Jesus? That's what he's going to ask us. What did you do with my son? What do we do with his son? Do we uh, preach the gospel? What do we do with the son? What do we do do with Jesus? Was Jesus number one or number 25? Jesus number one or number 14? Jesus number one or number five? Jesus has to be number one. And then you, 
you you'll be a good parent. You'll be a good husband. Sometimes <laughs> you'll be, you'll be a good coworker. You'll be a good worker. Hey, but sometimes we hard headed. Sometimes we want to do things our way. All we like sheep is going astray. Each of us to turn into our own way. But Jesus has come to bore those iniquities on his shoulders. That's why we can pick up the cross daily and follow him. Because he's picking it up for us. He, he's the one that met us on the road <clears throat> to Gagatha. He picks up the cross for us with his power. If my yoke is easy, my burden is light. We're to come to Jesus. I wish I had some music right now. <laughs> my brother Dave got good music on his show. A couple of guys. Uh, now the end begins. They have good music on there. I'm like silent. So I'm going to be working on getting some music. But I'm looking forward to seeing Jesus. I'm looking forward to seeing people who passed away. You know, the sad thing about me, though, is I don't have a particular person. I'm actually going to go up there and see, you know, like some people say, well, I'm going to see Grandma Betty or my uncle, you know, that. I don't really know who's going to be up there. I mean, I know who's not, but I don't know who's going to be up there. That's sad for me to say because I know I know a sister named Miss Gary, my choir director. But there's people that passed away in my life, and I'm not really. That's the only thing I want to go up there and see. Two things I want to go up there and see: the judgment seat of Christ. I fear that one. Uh, and uh, people did not make it. Now, people down here uh, are going to see who didn't make it by just visiting the graveyard, and that's going to be a sad case too, because once they get saved, they're gonna they're gonna be. I'll be too scared to go up to the graveyard, see my 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 parents or, or my you know friends or family or associates. They're still in the grave. That's that'd be a really sad occasion, folks. But I didn't extend the show. But uh, tomorrow uh, I'm going to do a nice little show. Uh, I have to figure out what time, but I think it'll be five o'clock um, Pacific Standard Time, eight o'clock Eastern Standard Time. But God bless y'all, and y'all have a wonderful day.